So let's start with this. This is my cell. I have a nucleus right here. This is a eukaryotic cell. And then inside that cell I have many, many, many different types of organelles and have a lot of mitochondria. I drew only one here because I'm not going to spend half a day drawing all those mitochondria. The mitochondria are very easy to identify if you have the right microscope or if you look on a drawing. These are the oval shape kind of organelles with a inner membrane that is folded on itself, right? So it creates those folds like this. What we have here inside the cell is called a cytoplasm. What we have inside the mitochondria is called a matrix. What we're going to look at right now is that is the citric acid cycle, or also known as Krebs cycle, or tricarboxylic cycle. There's different names for it. Always means the same thing. What we're going to look at takes place inside the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of our cell. This is where the energy is being created, and it takes place place inside the matrix. So all of the enzyme reactions that we're going to look at, and we won't look at them in detail, not in this video, um, happen inside the, 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 the cell matrix. Okay? So, glycolysis happens inside the cytoplasm. Acid, uh, Krebs cycle, as citric acid cycle, inside the, the mitochondria in the matrix. So glycolysis happens right here. We know that glucose to glycolysis to multiple steps will be eventually created, create two molecules of pyruvate, three carbons, six carbons here, two times three carbons right here, so we'll create two pyruvates. This pyruvate is going to be able to enter inside the mitochondria, right? So none of the other metabolites before that can do so, but there's a door that specializes in receiving pyruvate and brings it inside the mitochondria. Once inside the mitochondria and inside the matrix, this is where we are. So here, this is the matrix, right? And we will have a, a, the creation of a molecule that has two carbons that's called acetyl coenzyme A. So basically, pyruvate loses a carbon, associates with coenzyme A, and forms what is known to acetyl coenzyme A. It's just it's an enzyme transformation. This acetyl coenzyme A is now going to merge with a molecule that has four carbons. So remember, it has two carbons. It merges via an enzyme. It merges to, to, with a molecule that has four carbons to create a molecule that now has six carbons, right? Four plus two equals six. This is what we have here. Now, through a mul few multiple steps, what we will see is that this molecule C6 will now be converted into a C5 molecule, right? So the goal here of this, this, um, this cycle here is to extract electrons. Where are the electrons? Well, the electrons are in the links between the carbons. The high energy electrons are there. This is where they are. We explained that already, right? So in order to do this, we have enzymes that are going to cut, snip, the carbons at very specific spots. So once we do this, once we convert our carbon-6 molecule here into a 5-carbon molecule, we just lost a carbon. Where does that carbon go? Well, in our cases, in the case of eukaryotic cells, we create carbon dioxide. And we, whatever you breathe out, that's what's, that's what's being created we expel a carbon dioxide, we have nothing we can do with that molecule. We, we cannot extract more energy. So basically it's waste for us. So uh, carbon dioxide will be expelled. Where does that carbon come from? It comes from citric acid. Basically it comes from glucose in the beginning, right? Remember that. And then because we broke a bond in the carbon, we lost one carbon, well there is an, an electron that is now being um, uh, produced, right? It's free. But we know that in cells, carbons are not um, traveling alone. They're not. They need to be transported. So what we have here is a molecule of NAD+. This molecule is going to capture the electron and become NADH. 
And NADH can be used further down the road, right? So what we're doing right now is just we're just creating, packaging those electrons into this nice nifty little NADH box, right? So for uh, use after that. So this 5-carbon molecule now will be converted again into a 4-carbon molecule, right? So I've, here it is, 4-carbon molecule right here. What happens to the carbon? Well, we create carbon dioxide again. What happens to the electron that's found inside that carbon link between 5-carbon to 4-carbon? What happens to this electron? Well, it is captured with NAD into that NADH again. And then this carbon, for this four carbon molecule is now going to um, go through a succession of different transformations, internal transformations. And these internal transformations will involve the rearrangement and loss of electrons as well. Okay? Now, let's not get into the details of this for now. So, what's going to happen is those electrons are not lost, we harvest them. So, FADH, in this case here, we will have in the molecule of FADH, it's going to create FADH2, it's just a different box, you know, NADH being a blue box, for example, FADH2 is a red box, right? So, they're boxes, they're containers in which electrons are stored, molecular containers. And then, another rearrangement will create, uh, a, will, will release another electron, and that other electron is going to be Really were captured by NAD to NADH2. Okay? So when we look at this here, after our pyruvate gets inside the matrix, inside the mitochondria, it goes through a series of reactions that will transform this molecule here into a C6, then into a C5, then into a C4, and over and over again. So you see, this is a cycle. That's why this is called the Krebs cycle, Krebs being the one that actually discovered this, uh, this, this cycle. So, remember, where are the carbons going? Where are the electrons going? This is super, very, very important for what's coming next after that, especially the electrons, because that's where the next step is now to create those uh, ATP, and ATP will be um, created by the energy of those electrons. So those electrons are going to release their energy and this energy is going to be captured in order to create ATP from ADP, which is a difficult process.